Welcome. Uh, my name is Shirley Accord. I work as admissions officer at Rotterdam School of Management, and at the admissions office we handle the applications for the bachelor IBA, the pre-master and master programs. So today's session is about you asking questions to our students, these four students, um, they will introduce themselves later on. Um, before we start, uh, so you can ask them any question that you want to, it could be about program, classes, um, student life, maybe any tips and tricks about finding housing. If you have a um, admissions related question, for instance, you want to know if you're eligible with your diploma or whether you need to take an English language test, then I would recommend you to uh, come to the admissions, uh, speak to our admissions staff, so you can come to me afterwards, so you can ask those type of questions after this session. Either at the stand, you can speak to one of my colleagues, or you can come to me afterwards. Uh, furthermore, there are two or three ambassadors, student ambassadors in the room with a microphone. If you have a question, then please wait for them, raise your hand and please wait for them to come to you with the microphone and then you can ask your question. Other than that, feel free to ask any questions. So uh, I'm going to give the floor to the students who will introduce themselves and um, I'll be silent. So guys, it's up to you. Hey, hi, hello everyone, I'm Florence, I'm currently a second year IBA student and I did the VBO diploma, so I uh, went to a Dutch school, uh, so feel free to ask me any questions. Uh, hello, my name is Fedra, I am French but I live my entire life in Greece. Um, I, dip, uh, I graduated with the French high school diploma and I am also a second year student uh, at RSM and feel free to also ask me any type of question you could have. Yeah, um, hi everyone, my name is Shreya, uh, I'm also a second year. So for high school I did the international baccalaureate, also known as the IB diploma and uh, I grew up completely in Sweden, but I'm also, well, Indian, so it's nice to see you and l I look forward to any questions. Yes, I'm Linus, I'm uh, also a second year student, I'm from Germany and I did the Abitur. And if you have any questions for me, yeah, feel free to ask them. Okay, well, thank you guys for the introduction. Um, so let's start with the first question. Who is bold enough to ask the first question? Please raise your hand if you have a question. No questions at all? <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised. <laughs> that means I need to ask the questions then myself. Um, oh, there's somebody who uh, raises a hat. Yeah, we are all. Hello? It's not working. It's the sound, I think. The sound is not very good. No. no sound. Oh, wait. Sorry. There's another microphone coming. <laughs> Yeah, hello. Hello, hello. It's not working either. <laughs> well, yeah, we can, I think we can hear you. Mate. What about English tests for international students? Hello. Do you have to do the TOEFL test or other tests to... Well, it depends on your diploma. Admission. It depends on the diploma that you have okay. or obtain. Abitur, maybe you can tell them if you had to take an English language test. Um, yeah, so uh, for the Abitur, I think like at the time that I applied, um, having 10 points um, for your English uh, course is enough to not take a test. Yeah. So basically it's, it's okay if you meet the requirements for English, mathematics, uh, you can find all the requirements on the website. Uh, if you meet those requirements, uh, for some diplomas it's not necessary to take an English language test, such as for the Abitur. <coughs> but let's ask other questions which are not more focused on the students. Maybe there's somebody at the back there with the... Question, um, oh, would you comment for the, for the microphone, please? So you... No? Okay, then I tried a little bit louder. Oh, yeah, it works. So, um, Venus, you are now in the second semester. How did you find, let me say, your next home place? Because in the first two years, I guess you, you're the international students. And um, how was it complicated to find or you stay there or is it uh, are you already find some place outside of the university where you can live? And how complicated was it? About, how, about housing? Yeah, exactly. So during the second year or the first year? The first year and the second year. If you uh, 
So I would say as an international student, you have many possibilities. You can go through student housing, uh, which are on campus. For example, we have Xior or Hata, who are accessible to international students. Uh, you should check on their uh, websites how are uh, the application process uh, going uh, for the next uh, few months. Uh, personally, I went through a website which is called uh, Housing Anywhere. It is a website where you can find um, apartments uh, so rooms mostly uh, on the internet and you can just apply to rooms there. Usually they're asking for your passport to make uh, an identification um, of your identity. Uh, but it's, yeah, I would say that it's a quite tough process because housing in the Netherlands is actually very... Um, Problematic. It's very complicated to find housing easily, but as soon as you have your answer for uh, your bachelor um, application, if you got in the bachelor, then you should really start looking for housing as soon as possible, um, because yeah, it can be tough sometimes. And during the second year, personally, I could keep the room that I got because I got it through um, website. But if you get it through house uh, through student housing like Hata or Xior, as I mentioned, uh, then you're gonna have to move out uh, after your first year and you're gonna have to apply again to new uh, rooms uh, and everything so yeah it's quite challenging but it's still doable I would say if you're doing it on time how about you um, sorry not Linus how did you find housing uh, I found housing through a website called Kamanet but uh, it took me a lot of time, so you should definitely start early and uh, don't be discouraged when uh, you don't get the replies, uh, yeah, the yeah, tenants, um, the, like the... Um, landlords. Yeah, the landlords. Yeah, some exactly. of the landlords are yeah. a bit... Mm. They, uh, the landlords uh, also get flooded with applications for their rooms, so uh, yeah, I think I wrote 80 applications until I finally found a room. <laughs> So it does take time and uh, you should really start early. Yeah, so start your search early on. Don't wait until July, August. And uh, maybe a bit difficult in the beginning, uh, but don't give up. Um, so yeah. And also for student housing really meet the deadlines because for example, uh, because everyone wants it, uh, everyone is gonna apply for it as soon as the application is open for the housing. So. As soon as it opens, you go on the website and you try to take whatever you can. Uh, that's usually how students are doing it, especially during the first year. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, something I would do. <laughs> yeah, and also I would say for second year, um, I think make it aware to those who be you become friends with that you are in search for housing. It's nothing to be, for example, embarrassed or concerned about. And a lot of the times your friends will know other people who are maybe looking for a roommate or they know other platforms that aren't well known because I think it's an important issue. So just as long as you take action, you there's a high chance you'll find housing at some point. Okay, thank you. Uh, there's a question over there. And I see, oh, there's some, oh, I see. <laughs> Somebody in the back, and then you'll be next. Hello. Can you hear me, right? Yes, yeah. I can hear uh, my you. Name, uh, sorry, my name is Johan, and I have a question for Florence. Uh, being a Dutch student, uh, what, would you, what made you choose uh, international business instead of bedrijfskunde? And what do you see uh, currently in your second year as the biggest value? Can you repeat the second question again? What the value is that you see now you're in the program for one and a half year? Okay. Uh, so I think the biggest difference is that the program is taught in English and that there are a lot of international students. For example, I have a friend that's from Kenya, but also from France or like from people from all over the world. And also the courses are more uh, focused on international, so not only on the ne in the Netherlands, but also focused uh, globally. And I think also the culture is different in uh, international business administration because people come from all over the world, from top schools. So everybody is really motivated and has uh, like high uh, goals. Um, and I think now I think I made the right choice uh, because for me personally, I'm also uh, really ambitious and having those people around me really motivates me to aim high. And also the, the courses that are taught in English and the professors and 
Uh, the companies that we're working with are really focused on uh, like international companies, uh, which I also really love. So I think that is the most like the main difference between the two. Thank you. Um, there was somebody here at the front. Um, this lady. Hi. This is for Shria. Hmm? Just wanted to compare the first year of IBA with your last year of IB. How they compare or not? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part. How the I, the first year of the IBA compares to the last year of your IB program? Ah, oh, okay. Um, personally, I would say IB definitely prepared me for IBA because um, I did quite a high workload in the IB, for example. So coming from something where every day you have to go to classes for, what, six hours, study, then go home, study some more, to coming to university, it gave me a lot of time management skills that I'm really happy I gained because it's allowing me to do and pursue things also outside of my university classes. Um, and also the IB, I was around a lot of international people, for example, from the get-go. So coming into another program with such an international climate really made me already have a sense of comfort and also more open to meeting new people from different backgrounds and exchanging cultures and values, I would say, yeah. Okay. And um, just to ask the others, how would you experience your transition from high school to university? Was it difficult, especially for those who come from another country, such, such as you, Linus, or, sorry, I'm really bad at names, uh, Fedra. <laughs> Uh, so personally, uh, I moved to the Netherlands, so that was like quite a cultural shock because I was in Greece before, and so it's a very different culture there. Uh, I was also in a French school, so I would say that the school system was very, very different from uh, what you should be expected to do uh, here. Uh, for example, in the French system, we have a lot of hours at school. Uh, of course, we have homework to do after, but we still uh, are a lot involved uh, in the classroom. And here it was very different. It's a lot of self-studying, so I had to work uh, a lot on how to organize myself and yeah, how to just uh, motivate myself to go to the lessons knowing that uh, we didn't have an attendance list. It's all about learning a lot on how to self-manage your time, uh, your schedule and your studying in general uh, with your personal social life of course because yeah from the beginning of the first year I, I, I knew that I also wanted to get involved in associations and everything so I would say that uh, it was a very interesting transition and really made me learn so much about myself but at the same time it's also a challenging trans transition it's not that easy I would say and for me from uh, going from VBO to university I would say it was really like doable I think uh, just had to really find my learning style because uh, the workload is more uh, for example in VBO you had maybe like four chapters for uh, one subject for like a t uh, test week but now you have to have like almost the whole book for one subject so I couldn't really make my handmade summaries uh, like anymore so I had to find another way to study um, and yeah so I think the, m the most challenging w way uh, thing was just finding my own um, learning like study uh, Way, yeah, a way of studying. You, Linus? Yeah, for me, um, it was quite different, uh, like coming from a high school with uh, 30 students in the classroom to then a lecture hall with like 600. And um, yeah, but I wouldn't say that it was difficult to uh, yeah, integrate here. You just have to be open and uh, there are lots of, like, especially at the beginning of the year, um, you can easily find friends and uh, yeah, it's, it's quite easy if you're just open. Yeah. yeah, I would say that the university is really help, helping with 
uh, you know, helping you making friends. For example, uh, you can be a part of the Eureka Week, which is the introduction week right before coming uh, to Erasmus. You also have the IBA Freshman Weekend, so it's more specific for the IBA's uh, freshmen. And you're really here with guides who are helping you out around uh, the city, uh, helping you, you know, break the ice with other uh, freshmen students. And so I feel like the university is really helping a lot uh, on that side. Uh, they're helping also to make you adapt quick, quickly. For example, if you're not feeling uh, so sure about your studying process and everything, they have um, study advisors who are here to help you in case of need. So I, I do really feel, like I did feel that I was feeling uh, supported. Uh, from you know the university side and also from the student side because everyone is so motivated and we just help each other out and that's just creating such a beautiful environment. So yeah. Okay, thank you. So who wants to ask the next question? Oh, there's somebody here at the left. Yeah. Oh, this one works. Um, on the website, it says that you will be covering the areas finance, marketing, and sales, and other areas. What are the other areas being covered in IBA, and which one of those do you see the most while studying IBA? So you mean first year or like overall? In the overall course. Um, first, uh, I will first start with first year. So you had courses like spreadsheet modeling, focus on how to use Excel, also introduction to business, more focusing on the, the fundamentals of business, but also finance, accounting, marketing. And then uh, towards the second year, you also have entrepreneurship, business law, uh, responsible leadership, focusing on sustainability. So it's really a broad perspective. You get uh, a little bit of everything. <laughs> and then uh, in the second year, you get, you're going to work more uh, practically instead of um, like theory. Uh, so you really get it all, to be honest. Yeah, so it's a very broad study program by the sound of it. Okay. Can I ask another question? Yeah. Um, you really like say that you like model like the change according to like the UN sustainability laws, but do you see that coming back like in every class or do you have like separate class um, that are like focused on it? Uh, so you mean if you use the, uh, the things that you learned for your next subject or? Um, no, I mean like the whole part where they're like trying to make like change and like like they're like you guys have like that you guys wanted like for positive change do you like um, I don't, um, can I say it in Dutch? Yeah. Er staat dat zeg maar van positief veranderen en ook volgens de UN en dat dat helemaal terugkomt in de course. Maar zie dat dan dat het elke les dat ze ook een link maken naar sustainability of heb je dan aparte les over sustainability? So you basically mean the slogan for a force for positive change, what RSM stands for, and whether it's covered in all the courses that you get in the IBA? Is that what you mean? Yes. Um, I can. Yeah, if you okay. want. To, um, I can say right now, like we just mentioned, we have the responsible business leadership course, which is very sustainability specific. For example, right now, each of us are. Um, divided into groups and we have to look on one specific sustainability goal or SDG. But what I can say is in all the other courses, uh, we have something called the course manual, which gives you an overview. And in the bottom of each course manual, it kind of highlights one to three sustainability goals that the course wants you to link the class to. Of course, subjects like economics, maybe um, sustainability or the SDG goals are not as connected to. It's much more like mathematical. But in other subjects, the link is quite apparent. And the slogan, Force for Positive Change, is definitely more visible. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, was there another, there's somebody here at the front or? Oh, sorry, we'll be, we'll get back to you. Hi. Um, so I have a question about sports and extracurricular activities. So, um, well, especially in my case, I play hockey back at Spain. So I was interested in knowing about the clubs and different activities that you can do and how to apply to them. 
Uh, you oh. have a lot of uh, clubs that you can join, sports club. Uh, for example, last year I joined the basketball uh, association. Like at the beginning of the year, like around September, there's like an uh, application and you just have to fill it in. And then, yeah, most of the time you get in. Uh, and also you have other associations, study associations. Uh, for example, STAR is one of the largest ones we have. And also finance related. For example, right now I'm in the Asset Management Study Association, focused on finance. So we have different committees in them. And then uh, you get to learn more about finance specifically. Um, and also I think you have um, like photography uh, associations even, so a really like different associations, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and about the, the sports uh, specifically, uh, when you arrive uh, at Erasmus, you uh, have access to a gym, you can buy a sports pass, uh, which is yeah, gonna give you access to the gym, to sports courses, and which is gonna give you access also to other sports associations. About the hockey, I don't know specifically because I never played that sport, so I'm not sure if it's uh, um, present on campus, but I know that they have so many associations for so many different sports. There is also uh, an e-sport association, just to make you understand <laughs> how many associations you can find. Uh, and yeah, as Florence said, uh, apart from the sports side of associations, you can literally find whatever picks your interest. Uh, and that's what is also very nice about uh, RSM, is that they really push you to uh, become a better version of yourself by uh, joining so many personal projects but also projects with other people and yeah I just find it very dynamic. I'm pretty sure there's a hockey association so yeah. Um, we see, I see a couple of hands raised, there's one here in the middle, somebody also at the front, still have to wait a little bit. <laughs> we'll go. Um, um, I think on the one, two, three, four Hi, hello. row, oh, in the middle. Hi, sorry, I Can, have a question. Could you raise your hand if you want to ask Here. a question? Yeah. Okay. Hi, I have a question in particular for Shreya, oh. but it's applicable to sorry, everyone. Uh, what subjects did you take and how do you think it helped you, like, prepare? Uh, how do you think it, like, benefited you? So, um, so you mean in high school what yeah, I took? It's not too personal, sorry. Uh, so oddly enough, um, in high school for the IB program, I took physics higher level, biology higher level, English higher level, Spanish standard level, uh, math AA SL, um, and economics SL. So it's not very businessy as you may have picked up, but. I would say the subjects I took really did support me because physics demands a very, um, flat, like it forces you to have to think in very strategically in a sense with formulas and mathematically. So it really helped me in subjects where I had to do a lot of you know calculations. Biology, a lot of memorization went into studying. So when I came here for some subjects like introduction to business, I did have to learn a lot of new concepts, which does seem intimidating at first. But if you really sit down, and especially if you're sitting with some friends who are also, because everyone's finding this new to some extent, and you just sit down, um, yeah, you can pick up the concepts a bit quicker, I would say, with memorization. Economics is pretty straightforward. Um, we have a subject called economics in the first year for IBA, so that means what I studied in my IB program did transfer here. Uh, Spanish. Um, I don't think it really helped me much unless I was with some Spanish people. Uh, English, yes, it does help me a lot since my whole program is in English, so it makes me a bit more confident in speaking. Um, yeah, that's what I would say for me. Uh, and for me, um, I did the NT and G profile in high school, so that's with chemistry also, uh, <laughs> physics, um, biology. Uh, I also did like uh, bilingual classes, so I had the IB program, but only for English. And I had uh, Mathematics B, so Viscunda Bay. Uh, personally, uh, so for those who, did, who are doing the French uh, baccalaureate, uh, I took, as, uh, let's say, majors, I took uh, geopolitics and economics. So I still had an economics background, but I was way more focused on geopolitics. Uh, but I would still say that it helped me a lot. And I wasn't doing, um, in my last year of high school, uh, the mathematics major. I took it as a math complementaire, uh, complementary maths 
and so yeah I, I would say that it was it was still useful like I didn't feel like I had a big gap uh, during the mathematical courses so yeah Yes, I did uh, social sciences and English as my advanced courses, and uh, especially English came in handy coming here. Okay, thank you. Um, I see a couple of hands. For, oh, somebody's already got a microphone? Um, okay, yeah, please. Uh, I think it doesn't work. Oh. Well, if you speak a bit louder, maybe, okay. or otherwise, um, yeah, speak. So, last year. Okay, your first year of university, what were the subjects in IBA that you, found, that you found the hardest and why did you find them the hardest? And what was the aspect of university that was like the hardest to adapt to, except like maybe housing, which was like the initial challenge? What was the hardest thing that you found last year? Uh, I think for me the hardest subject was uh, accounting, uh, <coughs> because as I said before, I didn't really have economical or um, any finance related courses in high school, so I, that was also the first course in the first block. So I got how to get used to it and learn everything by myself, but at the end I passed it, so it was fine. And the overall challenge, I think, also just learning to um, study differently because you have a lot more to learn, uh, so just finding another way of yeah, studying. Uh, for me, I would say that the most challenging subject might have been operation management because uh, let's say I'm not like a math person and this was a very intense uh, mathy subject. Uh, still interesting though, but it was quite complicated. And I will also mention spreadsheet modeling. Um, it was quite intense, uh, I would say, because it's like something that you need to practice a lot and uh, it's quite complicated to get. It's based on Excel, so for those who didn't never even touch Excel, uh, that's quite a challenge. Um, and for the part about, in general, what was the most complicated thing to go through, I would say the fact that uh, IBA is very, um, let's say, high-paced. It's very intense uh, and very fast because the year is uh, structured in uh, five blocks. Each block you're going to have new subjects and then after each block you're going to have at the end new exams on new subjects and I feel like having two months only to learn a subject, process what you just learned and apply it at the exam, that was quite intense for me because yeah, I wasn't used to that during high school. I was used to take a class for so many years and then go to my final exam. Uh, so yeah, I would say that was tough. <laughs> Okay. Um, anybody else? Um. <laughs> okay. Um. Somebody all the way at the back. Hi. We've been waiting so long back here. We. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit um, blinded by the light. So yes. yeah. <laughs> um, a general question for all of you, maybe the opposite of the previous one. What memory of your first year do you think will stick with you forever? <laughs> um. <laughs> So for me, I would say from my first year, I think it was just meeting so many new people. So one thing that I was kind of nervous about in some way was, um, so my birthday is basically very early September. So right after the academic year, I didn't have my family to celebrate with. And I was kind of a bit sad, you know, after having all these years with your parents behind you and your family. You know, I didn't, it was so new to the year. I didn't also get too close with anybody yet. Um, but then these two girls who I met during one of the starter events, they came around 11 p.m. to my place with a cake and a few gifts and they just like called me down and it was just like so nice because it just shows how people in our program are just so sweet and open. Um, it does take some time to find your right group of friends, but I think that moment's just gonna like stick with me forever, yeah. Uh, for me, it was uh, when I joined SR, the student representation, and I was in the marketing committee, and at the end of the year, we had the uh, five-day trip to Paris, uh, and I met a lot of new people, and it was, like, really fun, so that was, like, a really good memory. Yeah, for me, it wasn't a specific moment, but uh, yeah, just the, the overall uh, collection of moments. 
um, whether it was in uh, associations like uh, TCG or uh, BNR Burst, where you can like get to meet a ton of new people and uh, have lots of fun with them, or uh, yeah, if you just um, yeah, meet with friends and uh, cook in the kitchen, and uh, yeah, it's just the amount of new experiences that I gained during the first year, and also. Um, how I personally developed myself during the first year, um, yeah, that's what's going to stick with me. Uh, personally, it would be the Eureka Week. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I found most of my best friends uh, through this single week. Uh, I will remember forever um, how it felt to start meeting new people and getting all of this new information. I just uh, found it so, so thriving. I, I loved it so much. And so, yeah, that would be, I think, one of my most memorable memories from, uh, from first year. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah, good question, by the way. Okay, and now I see so many hands. So there's some, still somebody here at the front who wants to ask a question. He's been raising his hands for quite a while. So maybe um, here at the front? Oh, oh well. Here, uh, first row, sorry. Sorry, yeah. Uh, my question was, how important is uh, mathematics in the overall course? Uh, good question. That's a good question. Uh, I will say mathematics is there for the quantitative subjects. So we do have a course, literally mathematics, but then for example, in economics, it's very simple math, it's not um, high level, it's not like intense calculus, um, but maybe like you need to know like integrals and a few basic stuff like that. But the nice thing with um, at least our program is for math, which is quite, I think, not too late into the first year. They have multiple platforms where you can go and they have a lot of practice questions to really get you up to speed which to, with tutorials and also guides. And we have like, I think it was live lectures or online modules online, where, yeah. online modules, yeah, which you can just rewatch to understand where you need to be with mathematics. It's very clear. And like I said, a lot of the subjects are not highly mathematical. We have a lot of like introduction to business basically has no math in it. But then you have economics where you do have to do a bit of math. So it's like that. But it is an essential part of the program. So if you're already struggling a bit or are not very good at it, and it's already a bit hard to get into the program. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, yeah. Anyone else? Who? Oh, there's a lady in the. I can't really count the rows. Somewhere half middle or. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we know that uh, Erasmus University is uh, very well known for, for its practical approach to study. And uh, the question is, how is it implemented uh, at your course? And uh, if you had already experience with uh, companies, international yeah. companies maybe here in the Netherlands, what, uh, what is your experience? Yeah, so uh, from the first year, uh, we already have a course that is very implementing. It is deeply implementing all of the all of the skills that, and the knowledge that we're learning throughout the year. It is called Strategic Business Plan. And this is a course that is gonna be for four blocks. We're gonna be with a team of students uh, and you're gonna have to contact and work with an actual company and uh, help, them, uh, help them out in building up a strategic business plan for that company. So it's focused on consulting. Um, and this is already from the first year uh, that was starting to do this kind of uh, implementation, uh, practical, let's say, um, implementation. Uh, during second year right now, we're already understanding that it's getting even more practical because we're having so many uh, group projects. Uh, so that's uh, very specific of second year. Uh, we really dive into everything that we learned during the first year to implement it um, in other courses. And on top of that, uh, because the IBA is teaching you so many things and it makes you understand so many new areas of interest you could have. You're also, through associations, also developing, again, those skills and using them uh, in real life cases. For example, um, 
so again about consulting because RSM uh, uh, has a lot of consulting opportunities. Uh, there is the Case Club, Star Case Club, that is one of the biggest uh, consulting uh, associations uh, here. And they are taking students uh, to case competitions with partner universities all over the world and they're really giving the opportunity to really put what you learned through the courses uh, in real life cases. And so yeah, I would say that that's very, very interesting when you are an RSM student and, uh, and you want to dive more into uh, the subjects you're learning. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, there are more hands than the lady in the pink sweater, jacket. Can I ask a question? Uh, I have a question for all of you. What was the uh, reason why you uh, choose for the Erasmus at university? Uh, so, yeah. yeah. For me, uh, because I'm Dutch, it was close to my like hometown. So I live in Dordrecht right now still. So it was just like one hour commute. So that was like one of the main reasons, but also it's one of the top schools in Europe and also because of its international environment. Um, yeah, so for me, uh, I am also Swedish, so I am an EU citizen, so I already wanted to cut my scope down to Europe, so I could also be close to home in some way. And I chose this university also because of the student life, so to me there are a lot of business schools out there, and I looked at a lot of their curriculums, and they're very similar. There is the similar theories and concepts you need to have with your bachelor degree, but RSM or like Erasmus University in general really does put a focus on students. So we have so many associations for different interests and passions. And we also have a lot of career fairs um, like Star Management Week, which um, you can uh, look into later where you, be it like other companies come to our campus um, or you go around Rotterdam and you get to talk with companies. So they put so much resources into us as students. I, I personally feel valued when I come to this university. I would say also the city of Rotterdam itself. Uh, it's a very, let's say, active city. Uh, you can literally find so many uh, things to do, so many activities, cultural things also, cultural events uh, that are happening. Um, and because it's so dynamic, it's mostly students who are living here, and it makes it even more, let's say, it, it makes just the environment more simple to, to adapt to. So yeah, and it's a beautiful city, I really loved it. Yeah. I chose RSM because uh, yeah, I compared it to uh, German schools and I couldn't really find that international environment that is given here. So uh, yeah, that's why I chose RSM. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, who else? I see one question there. Some, some. Okay, that person first. Uh, I have... Oh, hello. Uh, Peter. Okay, uh, Pedra, I have a question for you. Uh, what were your grades in high school, and why did you all chose uh, <coughs> ABA? Me? No, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> what? Uh, for me, my GPA. Um, so I had the Dutch VBO. I had a 7.3 average, um, and I had courses like chemistry, physics, etc. And uh, why I chose ABA was your question, right? Um, because I first was really doubting about going the chemistry side, uh, but then I went to the open day and also followed like campus days and like the courses in real life. And then I was more uh, interested in business and I also like that they have like a broad perspective so I could really get to know myself and what I want to do later on. Yeah. Like what's your GPA in high oh, school? Oh, what was my GPA in high school? Uh, oh yeah, but for those who did the French one, I had a 18.5, I think. Uh, oh no, not at the baccalaureate. At the baccalaureate, like the final grade, I think I had 17.90 or something. Uh, and why did I choose IBA? Well, uh, 
I, I think I said it so many times, it's like, you know, international environment, uh, it's uh, so many active students, so many motivated and ambitious students, um, and also it's a top program, and I really wanted to challenge myself with that, so yeah. And I also wanted to, to go to another country, I didn't want to go to France or Greece, uh, so I looked a bit uh, abroad, and I saw uh, RSM, and I was like, I want, I want that school, I want the IBA there, so that's why I applied. Um, so my GPA, well, the IB high school program doesn't really have GPA, but if I had to convert it to one out of 10, I think it's at least, it was like 0 0.8 roughly. Um, but to give it in the IB version, it's around 36 that I got to get into RSM. Yeah, I have uh, no idea what the, what the GPA would be. Um, um, my like my German uh, Abitur, I did it with uh, 1.7. Um, it's quite uh, like you're, you're not getting accepted right away. When you uh, like most students have a uh, Abitur of 1.2, 1.3 something, and they they get accepted in the first 750. Um, yeah, but even if you have a like as long as you're above a two. Um, you have decent chances of getting in. And for me, uh, IBA the first year wasn't really a problem. And uh, yeah, like you can, you can easily manage to do it even with a yeah, worse uh, GPA or like worse uh, average than, than other students here. Yeah. So basically you can be very, very smart in high school, but then again, when, once you start here, you start at the beginning with other smart people. So you begin with a clean slate. Um, so we maybe have time for one or two questions, I think. One question, oh, okay, one question. Yeah, I don't have a watch, but one question maybe. Um, who wants to, oh, there's somebody, yeah? Um, I have a question for the whole panel. At RSM, you obviously have to get 60 credit points like per year. Did you guys experience that as challenging and stressful, or did you think that it motivated you to like do the work and to obviously not fail the year? Like, how did you experience that? Uh, for me personally, I didn't find it challenge challenging uh, because um, for each course you have to have a minimum of 5.5, but within that course you have maybe like a written assignment or a group project or, um, yeah, and then the, for example the written um, exam, maybe the minimum grade will be a, a 4.5 and then the group assignment um, I think also 4.5 and together they have to be a 5.5 and then you get all the, the points. So for me it was not that challenging. Uh, personally it's the opposite. <laughs> I really found the IBA challenging uh, because it's so quick and so to learn everything so quickly that was like something very different from what I was used to. Uh, I went through resets and resets because uh, when you fail the first time a course you can reset it and so yeah I would say that sometimes it can be quite tough I'm not gonna lie that's my personal experience uh, but I still managed to do it I'm still here <laughs> so in the end uh, I still managed to pass my first year but I would say that I've put a lot of effort into it, um, but at the same time, it was it was worth it. Everything was worth it, and even though sometimes it might be stressful, uh, I still felt like it was something that I'm never gonna change if I could, you know. So yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, right. yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Um, those students will be at the stand, so don't worry, you can still speak to them afterwards. So um, thank you all for coming, and uh, see you at the stand.